talk a little bit about the brawl for all fiasco. Yeah, you will. The reality is what, what they called, they had the different road agents that gathered <laughs> up all the talent into the cafeteria area. And basically they start talking about this concept and they, and they basically said right out to get go, and the only two people that uh, will, will not be allowed in this the brawl for all was Ken Shamrock and Dan Severn. And I had a road agent sitting right next to me, standing right next to me. And I'm like, well, do I have to sit here and listen to Eddie Moore if I'm not, not a part of it? He goes, no, you, you can leave. And I, and I left. So that was it. And it went on for several weeks that they were actually doing it to where I'm just laying back in, in the uh, uh, locker room type area because sometimes you don't know if your match is going to take place or not because there's like half a dozen different storylines that are taking place. you got these weekly shows that lead up to the monthly pay-per-views. And so certain days have got to... Uh, take place and there was sometimes that uh you know they'll just pull an eraser and just you know, your match will be taken off because somebody else's promo went too long or a match went too long and they need to save some time somewhere so i'm just kind of just waiting there to see if i was even going to be on the roster here for, for for the night and one of the road agents came by and said uh hey uh dad how would you like to be in the brawl for all tonight and i'm like going oh. like against who and how much they just threw out a name gave me a price tag i'm going okay <laughs> right. I, I felt like just a mercenary at that at that point, but you right. know, just a price tag and a head, that's all. But see, and that's the that was the, the the fishy thing to me was that they said that we wouldn't be allowed to be in it. And so all these guys are training for months for the brawl for all. They're they're aware they're going to do it, right? And then the night of the show or the day before the show, they go up to Dan and go, Hey, how would you like to be in the brawl for all? No training. Almost no like nothing. they were setting him up, but I, I the, the but the whole mm. brawl for yeah. all in the first place. Why would you do something like this in the world of professional wrestling? Desperation I mean, for ratings. I, I just look at that. You probably had some higher ups, mucky right. mucks, all sitting around, <laughs> yeah. partaking of a few barley pops <laughs> and a few other elixirs, <laughs> and they're being boastful, right. bragging about different people and the talent. Right. So how I look at it is they're, they're playing chess and we're the pawn Let's pieces. see who's really, let's see who's really tough. Yeah. So they, like, they, they do well, they know who's there. really tough. Dan would squash him, right? Right, but, right. But when they come up to him the day of and go, hey, how'd you like to be a bro? All these guys have been training for months and then you go up to a guy like, when Dan still would have destroyed him uh, just with his abilities, right? He'd be suplexing him over and over again. But it was the way that it was actually, it started to roll out there. It was almost like, Oh, hey, by the way, you want to be in the brawl for all? It's tonight. <laughs> right, right. Did they have to get a special commission for that? Because since the, since these are legitimate fights. It's, it's Vince McMahon. So there was no... <laughs> he yeah. can do whatever there was he no wants. Well, no, I, they I, weren't I commissioned uh, at all. A lot of... It, I mean, well, Vince McMahon actually exposed the business himself because he, he don't... By saying that this is a, a work, it's a... We, uh, we know all the uh, the outcomes of all of these finishes. If it falls underneath the umbrella of professional wrestling to where now... You don't have to have athletic commissions involved. It's entertainment, not an yeah. athletic. I right. still think that I, I like that aspect that they would at least get a physical once a year for professional wrestling because there's, there's some uh, wrestlers <laughs> that are borderline diabetic, they're way overweight. I mean, they, they, they should have their blood pressure checked. Right. You know, just so that you know that uh, you're at least healthy one physical a year. I think that's not asking too much. And also, uh, especially if you get into these hardcore gore type matches where you get you carved up your forehead you kind of like to know that they don't have any hiv hep b and hep c <laughs> right. yeah, kind of good to know that at least once a year so right 